As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to own a Game Boy. Every weekday, I'd sit and watch Channel 7's game show, Amazing, and imagine myself being one of the lucky contestants to win the top prize. The portable console on every kid's wish list. The next best thing I had in the year 2000 was emulation through MS-DOS where my sister and I played split-screen first-gen Pokemon. A year later, when everyone moved on to Pokemon Gold and Silver on a Game Boy Color, I saved up 50 bucks to buy my friend's DMG Game Boy with Pokemon Blue. And I could then take my adventures with me everywhere I went. Now that I'm in my 30s, I still take my analog pocket with me when I travel for work. But coming home, I had no convenient way to resume my progress on the Mr. FPGA without using a computer to transfer my save files. That is, until now. The Polymega is too damn expensive, and I'm gonna build my own. I watched Generational Gamers' tutorial on playing original NES cards on the Mr. using a USB NES. I had a Joey Jr. made by Australian developer Benven, which is a Game Boy cartridge reader and writer for the PC. And thanks to Generational Gamer, I was playing Game Boy games on the Mister from a real cartridge. But this still didn't allow me to access my saves from the cartridge. I was searching for a way to somehow transfer saves to and from the Mister and stumbled across EMK Ultra 64 on GitHub. They made a script to copy save files from the Mister and an FX pack, formerly known as the SD to SNES. This got me tinkering with a script of my own but I didn't know the first thing about coding for Linux. And that's where my friend Carl came to help get my feet off the ground. He goes by DentNZ Online and is better known for bringing MSU1 to the SNES Mr. Core. So I ended up making a set of scripts that'll copy save files to and from the original game cart on the Mr. in a matter of seconds. I also adapted the idea of MUK Ultra 64 scripts to convert and transfer EverDrive GB saves. And seeing I am a new programmer, please back up your saves before running these scripts and use them at your own risk. Here's how they work. First, you need to make a shortcut for attached USB devices on the Mister. Press F9 to open a terminal and log in with root and one for password. Plug in the Joey Jr. or the EverDrive's microSD card via a USB adapter and type in LSBLK and enter and see what's attached. For me, it's USB 0. So following Generational Gamer's guide, let's make a symbolic link which is essentially a shortcut. Point to the Game Boy Color folder by typing in CD space slash media slash fat slash games slash GBC and hit enter. Now that we're inside the folder, create the shortcut to the USB device with ln space dash s space slash media, slash USB zero, and hit enter. I'll do the same for the Game Boy Advance, so repeat the last two steps and replace GBC with GBA. Now that removable drives are accessible, we need the scripts that'll transfer save files to and from these devices. Head over to the Marco Retro GitHub repository, links are in the description, and click on code to download the zip file. Now copy the .sh files over to the script folder on the Mr. SD's card. In Pokemon Red I'll save in front of the CRT of course, so we know the specific location where the player should be when the save gets copied to the Mr. Attach it to the Joey Jr, then plug in the USB-C cable and run the script GBC to Mr. Load up the GBC core and make sure autosave is turned on. Go to the USB 0 folder to run the game, which is actually transferring to RAM, so it does take a little longer than running from the SD card. And we're in front of the TV. Let's go to a different location and save. Bring up the OSD to write the save to the Mr's SD card, and then reboot. Go to scripts and run Mr to GBC. The new save copied back over to the cart, so let's test it back in the Game Boy. Now, something that I couldn't get a workaround is that you need an internet connection or the real-time clock hardware add-on. 
And this is because the script copies the latest file to the cart, so it needs to know which is the latest file by time. And this shows that save transfer works back to the cartridge. There's a few more steps to get this working with the EverDrive GB. Load up the EverDrive in a Game Boy and go to the EDGB folder and then save. Find the name of the game that you were just playing and copy SRAM to file. Connect the EverDrive's SD to the MISTER by a USB adapter and run the EDGBC to MISTER script. This transfers and converts save files from the EverDrive's .SRM format to .SAV for the MISTER. And keep in mind that both these scripts overwrite existing saves with the same name. To save them back to the SD, just run the MISTER to EDGBC. Now put the micro SD back into the EverDrive, locate the save and select this option. Press start to load the game that's already in flash memory, otherwise the save game gets purged when loading a game from your list. You may be wondering why all the trouble to play original carts on an FPGA that can already play all of your ROMs from the SD card. Well, gamers have been doing this for years using a Super Game Boy on the SNES, and the GameCube's Game Boy Player, and more recently on the Analog Pocket using the dock. Inside Gadget sells a Game Boy cart transmitter that essentially turns your Game Boy into a wireless controller with minimal lag. You can buy receivers for the GameCube or USB for the MISTER, so you can get an authentic experience with your preferred Game Boy form factor. How many times have you sat on the couch scrolling through a list of ROMs trying to decide what to play? Sometimes an hour has passed and you've loaded a few games, but had a non-productive play session by not progressing past the first level in any of those games. Well, that's where game cards really shine, where you'll be committed to playing that game long enough to actually master the game and have a more fulfilling experience. And you don't need to own an EverDrive to have a rideable flash cart. This is an official Nintendo flash cart that was only sold in Japan where owners could purchase and flash new games onto their cart at a Nintendo Power kiosk. Then I have several custom-built flashable carts using MBC3 and MBC30 mapper boards. These are original Japanese carts with the ROM chip removed, and in its place an FRAM chip soldered to a custom board that was printed by OSH Park thanks to designer J. Rodrigo. There's a list of compatible donor carts, and these Japanese carts were cheap and have a real-time clock for later-gen Pokemon games. If you're the type that doesn't want to cannibalise an official cartridge, but still want a DIY, then there's custom PCBs that you can order on OSH Park, or inside gadgets to name a few. I also soldered flat flexible cables from OSH Park thanks to creator HDR. The flex cable and battery retainer means no more soldering and they fit a larger CR2025 batteries without bulging the cartridge. Then these carts can get flashed with the Ben Ven Joey Jr. To flash, you just drop the ROM onto the cart and wait till copying is completed and that's it. Another reason I prefer using these original carts is they consume the same power as a regular game. My IPS modded Game Boy Pocket can't even load past the EverDrive's OS check screen but single flash cards play just fine. There's been a resurgence of interest in the Game Boy with some of the Game Boy library being made available for the Nintendo Switch. But if you see the benefit in using physical carts on original hardware with a mix of couch gaming, then please share in the comments your thoughts and experience. These scripts are basic and maybe someone with much better coding experience can consolidate them and maybe even create a menu interface for selectable game saves to copy rather than whole batch save overwrites. And at the very least, this was a fun experiment to streamline my portable saves to play on the old tube in 240p. So let's see if this project goes any further in the future. Hang in there little Marco Retro, 20 years later, you're gonna make it.